So uh, my name is Prathamesh. That's my Twitter handle. Uh, last time I checked, my Twitter followers at another conference, they were 999. So you can follow me. But I'm not sure how much the count is right now. So we'll see. Uh, I'm director at Big Binary. We work on Rails, uh, Ruby, React, React.js, React Native, a lot of things. So uh, if you want to talk about any of these, uh, catch me later. Uh, yes, and as she said, I came uh, from, I, I stay in Pune. But I didn't come from India. I actually flew from San Francisco because I was there. Uh, you should definitely come to Pune. Uh, we have good food, good weather. We also have a Rubicon in August. So if you uh, want to visit Pune, that's a good excuse. Uh, I'm part of Rails Issues team. Uh, I have very big responsibility as part of the Issues team member. I can close issues. If you open them, I can close them. Uh, I don't do it all the time, but sometimes I do close the issues. So if I have closed your issue, I'm really sorry about it. But I have to do it sometimes. I also have some warnings. Uh, so the, this talk is also a bit technical, non-technical. That's fine. But no durians and durian jokes are allowed during the next two days at Red Dot Rubicon. So all the durian jokes are already over. If you have those in your slides, please remove them. Uh, I have another sad news for you. Uh, and I'm just telling it up front in, uh, at the start of my talk because uh, I really don't want to disappoint you. I cannot give you any stickers, sorry. I have seen a lot of speakers doing this, like they say that, okay, I will give you stickers, come and find me after my talk, but I'm really sorry, I don't have them. That doesn't mean I, like the, uh, I don't like them. Uh, in fact, uh, this is my laptop and I like stickers a lot. So uh, when I started seeing tweets about Red Dot RubyConf, I was really excited because I saw that we are getting a lot of stickers. Uh, I already got them in the morning, but I want more. So I want these. I also want these. So if you have stickers, come and find me after my talk. I'm wearing this <laughs> Code Trias t-shirt. And let's talk and give me your stickers. So I want them. And I'm fine with anything. I like t-shirts too. So <laughs> I like all swag. OK, so on a serious note, uh, I'm not going to talk about our spec. I'm going to talk about uh, the default Rails uh, test recipe that comes uh, bundled with Rails. Uh, Rails 5 is very big release, and there are a lot of changes related to how we should test our apps too. So I'm going to talk about some of those changes. And I promise, there are no jokes after this. Everything is very serious. Uh, we will be talking about some serious testing stuff and secrets and everything. So yeah, let's start. Let me tell you the biggest secret about uh, testing Rails 5 apps. And just delete your tests. That's the biggest secret. Once you delete your test, you don't have to worry about anything. The talk is over. So uh, thanks, everyone. If you have any questions, uh, I can take them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't worry. Uh, I'm not going to stop like that. I will be speaking <laughs> for next half an hour. So now, literally, all jokes are over. Coming back to the actual content now. So uh, testing is a very important part of our uh, daily life. We, we write tests, run tests all the time. Uh, and Rails 5 had some interesting changes for both running as well as uh, writing tests. When we run tests, uh, we expect that uh, we will get good feedback about uh, the tests. Uh, because it's an iterative process. It's not like that we uh, write code for the first two days of the week and run tests on Wednesday after lunch at 1 PM. Uh, we do it all the time. So, so uh, the output that we get from running the test is very important. But sadly, uh, the default way of running tests in Rails uh, was not that great uh, before Rails 5. Uh, we run all the tests using rake tests. We got some other rake tasks also to run specific tests like controllers, models, and other things. But we miss out on a lot of things that are present in other libraries. Like we cannot rerun the failed snippets. We cannot run tests uh, only by uh, specifying the line number of the test. We cannot have options like fail fast, defer output. In fact, we even have to include a gem to get colored output. I think that should be the fundamental right of every tester, right? We should get colored output. But that is also not possible by default. So and uh, most importantly, it's not like uh, all of these things are not possible. A lot of gems are already providing these uh, on top of Minitest, which is uh, the library that uh, Rails test uh, suite is built on. So and Minitest is uh, very uh, pluggable. So you can extend it using writing your own plugins. and a lot of people are already doing it. So Maxidus, it provides all of these features like uh, failing tests, rerun, and everything. 
Uh, there is also M, which uh, we can use to run test only by line. But they were not present in Rails. So for Rails 5, Rails team decided that enough is enough. Let's make running test great again. So DHS also said that he would like all of these features to, to be backed inside Rails itself rather than uh, using individual gems. So Rails 5 will ship with a proper test runner. Uh, instead of uh, running our test through rake test, we will now have to run them through this test runner. And we can use it by uh, running this bin rails test command. And it accepts proper arguments. So it is a proper executable which can accept uh, like whatever options we want to pass. And it provides uh, most of these uh, missing features, like rerunning snippets, uh, running only failed tests, uh, getting colored output, and everything. So we get uh, these kind of messages when we run the test, and we can reuse those uh, lines to rerun only failed, uh, failed tests. And we can also provide some more options, like uh, fail fast, defer output, backtrace, and uh, most of these things which were not present earlier, uh, they are now supported. Uh, this test runner is based on Minitest. Uh, because Minitest 5 has a plugin architecture, and Rails now has its own plugin and a custom reporter, uh, which provides all of these options. And obviously, all of these features were already present in a lot of libraries. Uh, so it's, it's like uh, nothing is new here. Uh, it's just that it's now part of the uh, default Rails stack. So there are a lot of uh, inspirations like Aspect, Minitest, uh, Reporters, and so on. But the most uh, important thing is uh, now the default Omakase stack it supports uh, these features by default. So uh, once you create a new, brand new Rails 5 app, or you upgrade to Rails 5, uh, you have all of these by default in your uh, test suite. You don't have to do, uh, like you don't have to in install any other gem. It just uh, works by default. So this was all about uh, running the test. Now we will talk about uh, writing tests. So there are some significant changes in uh, the way we write tests in Rails 5. Uh, so Rails tests have typically these three components. Like you write unit tests for your models or uh, your uh, simple Ruby classes. Then you have functional tests, uh, which test the controllers. And integration tests are testing uh, the scenarios, like complete uh, scenarios of a particular feature. There are not, uh, like there is no change related to unit tests, so that stays as, as it is. But functional and integration tests have changed a lot. In fact, uh, controller tests are the only ones that are most affected by Rails 5. So they do deserve a special mention, and we will talk about them in detail. So it's interesting, actually, uh, what we test in a controller test. Uh, so they generally, controller actions handle incoming requests. Uh, in a Rails app, they do some processing with that request and returns, uh, returns the response. Uh, or sometimes they redirect, whatever. But they return some response. So when we want to test a controller uh, action, we should test the response that comes out of that request. So this is the typical controller test case uh, that we have in Rails 4. Uh, here we are uh, sending a, a request, post request for creating the article. We are passing some params. Uh, we are checking whether the response got redirected to a particular page. But we are also testing some changes that, that are happening with database uh, uh, with this action. So. We are not really testing only the response. We are also testing uh, the database changes, which are not part of the response. So we are also changing some third party things which are not uh, part of the response. So we are actually testing the current state. We are not testing the response, but we are testing the uh, changes in the state that happened due to that request. And that state can be anything. It can be a uh, controller's HTTP resp uh, response, or it can be uh, where we got redirected, or it can be HTML response or JSON response. It can be changes to a database also. Now, one of the good things uh, about these uh, controller tests is they are very easy to write. We can just write three, four lines, and we can test whether that controller action works properly or not. Uh, we can test response. We can test database changes. We have all the helpers for them. We can also test things like which template got rendered. Uh, we can test uh, which instance variables uh, we were using in that particular action. It's very convenient uh, to write and run uh, controller tests. But these controller tests, they actually lie. They don't actually uh, follow the same way that uh, Rails uh, follows when a typical request hits a, a Rails app. So they by bypass that typical uh, request response cycle uh, when uh, these controller tests are run. Because when we run these kind of uh, functional style controller tests, there is no middleware stack that gets invoked uh, when this test is run. 
So it, it just directly hits that particular action and uh, tries to see uh, what is happening inside that action. So even if we are uh, writing too many controller tests, they're not actually following the t uh, request response cycle, uh, cycle that Rails actually uses uh, when it uh, serves request in production. So even if uh, controller tests are very easy to write, uh, they are not really testing your controller actions in true sense. They are just like unit testing uh, your controller actions. And that's where uh, integration tests come. So that's the alternative to controller tests uh, in uh, like functional style controller tests in Rails. Uh, we can write integration tests because they don't bypass the uh, uh, middleware stack. They follow the same structure that a typical request follows uh, when it hits uh, the Rails app. And this is the simple uh, uh, integration test uh, fr from Rails 4. So we can do almost the same things that we can do uh, with a functional style controller test. We can uh, send the request using the same uh, request helpers. We can send params. We can test whether uh, what happened to the response, whether it got redirected or uh, anything other than that. We can also test uh, the changes to the database, similar to how we test them in functional style tests. So these integration tests, they are almost same as controller tests. We can do the same things that we were able to do in controller tests. The advantage is they're close to the real world. So they simulate the same process that happens when uh, a, a request actually comes and hits our app. So it's good to write uh, integration tests rather than writing functional style tests. But then why don't we write it? Why don't we encourage uh, writing uh, integration tests? Because the reason was before Rails 5, they were really slow compared to the functional style tests. They were very slow. and. Uh, so that's why the recommended way was to write uh, functional style tests when you want to uh, test your uh, controller actions. But uh, there was a lot of work done uh, during the development of Rails 5, and uh, now the integration tests are not that slow. In fact, they are as uh, fast as your functional style tests in Rails 5. So there, there is no way, uh, so there is no need to actually have uh, the old functional tile, uh, style test anymore. We can just write uh, integration tests, and they will work in the same way. And that's why uh, integration controller tests are now default in Rails 5. So if you generate a new Rails app and uh, uh, generate a, a resource using scaffold, uh, you will get a test like this. Instead of functional, now it is using uh, integration style tests. So these will be generated by default now onwards uh, in Rails 5. And the old style functional controller tests uh, inheriting from uh, action controller test case, they're not gone completely, but they're soft deprecated. So that code is still present in the Rails repository, and you will be still able to use those kind of tests in 5.0, but uh, Rails by default will not generate them. Uh, Rails will generate integration tests. So they will still continue to work. If you have your older tests uh, and you're upgrading an older app from four to five, and if you have such tests, they will still continue to work. Uh, this code base related to action controller test case uh, might be removed in future versions of Rails. So uh, it can be uh, put in, into a separate gem, and we will have to include that gem if we still have those tests in uh, some other major versions of Rails. So even if I said that uh, integration tests are almost same, you can do same thing that you are able to do in controller tests, there are some implications which uh, we need to talk about uh, because things are not exactly as same as uh, functional style tests uh, with integration tests. So with Rails 4, uh, it is possible to access session directly in our setup or uh, in any, uh, any other test also. So we can do something like this. We can access the session, set some value, and then uh, we, we can uh, access that in our test. Basically, we can assert against that. What we are really doing here is we are sort of bypassing hitting the actual endpoint, which hits that this session value. And we are actually testing the second step uh, after, hitting the, uh, after uh, assigning the session. But this will not work in uh, Rails 5. So uh, you, cannot, uh, use, uh, like you cannot use session in the same way that uh, you are allowed to use in Rails 4. So if you try to do this uh, same with Rails 5, we will get an error, like undefined method session for nil, nil, nil class. Because uh, in Rails 5, we have to actually send a post request for that particular URL, which will set the session in, in the controller code. So instead of us setting the session uh, directly through test, we have to set, uh, we have to introduce another level 
which will uh, directly hit that URL, set the session, and then we can test what we wanted to test. We can also like extract. This is a very common pattern, and we'll most probably need it for all of our tests. So we can also extract it uh, into a helper method. So if you are using device, uh, you might be used to writing like sign in as and then the username. Uh, that actually sets the session internally directly uh, in the controller test. But that will not work uh, in the Rails file. So if you are used to writing feature tests, you might be logging in uh, for the every request, like uh, in setup block, log in for every request and then test uh, what you wanted to test. So we have to follow the same way now uh, for integration tests in Rails 5. Same is uh, same case with uh, things like headers also. So earlier it was possible to directly set headers on request and other stuff. Uh, that is also not possible now. Uh, you have to send those uh, headers separately as part of parts of the argument uh, to that request. So because of this change of uh, switching to integration tests as default, our functional style controller tests are no longer functional style controller tests. So all the rules of uh, writing an integration test now apply to uh, writing a controller test. And these integration tests are like more black box style tests rather th uh, than uh, our functional tests. So uh, we are not actually allowed or recommended to uh, test the internals of our uh, functional style tests. We have to test what comes out of them. So it is like more black box testing than what we had before. And this brings us to the interesting question, like what now we cannot test in a controller test, that uh, it has changed to integration test, what we cannot do that we were allowed to do before. So the recommended way is, uh, as it is more black box testing, don't go inside the controller and try to test more and more controller internals. Now what are the controller internals? Let's see uh, one of the example. So, uh, we can have something like this. We, we have some instance variable in our uh, controller actions. And in Rails 4, it was allowed, uh, it was allowed that you can test which uh, instance variable was assigned using this assigns helper. You can test what template got rendered. So this all was possible uh, in Rails 4. But is it really testing the thing that we wanted to test? Uh, we are just verifying that uh, this instance variable was assigned, but we are not testing the value. We are testing this template got rendered, but not actually testing what actually got rendered from that template. So we are just scratching the surface. We are not actually testing the things uh, that the controller is doing. So the same test can be rewritten uh, in a Rails 5 style integration test. And uh, we, we, here, we, we are actually asserting against the uh, actual template here, like what actually got generated uh, through this uh, HTTP request. So we are, select, like we are checking the DOM and seeing like this particular element uh, got rendered. Uh, and then this can match our database values. So if, my, if I have a repo with this particular name, then I can test uh, my DOM that, OK, this response got generated, and this ha that response has uh, this particular test. Now, you must be worried, like, why I'm doing uh, these kind of things. I'm coupling my uh, test with uh, the generated HTML or generated JSON. So actually, that's what uh, the integration tests are trying to uh, recommend. They're trying to recommend that test the response that got generated from the request, rather than testing this uh, hypothetical things like uh, say uh, like uh, instance variables or template directly test the response that got generated uh, from the request so uh, this dem uh, rails dom testing gem it provides a lot of helpers for uh, asserting facts against the generated html and uh, i just uh, show an example of assert select but there are a lot of other things like css select and you can have your custom uh, counts for how many elements you want and stuff like that so uh, this gem can be a useful thing for writing controller tests in Rails 5. So what we are actually trying to do is we are not really testing the controller, particular controller action in isolation. We are testing the controller and view together. So it's like you are test, uh, treating the controller and view interface as the same thing. So we are more and more focusing on end-to-end -end testing, what is getting generated from that particular request. And we are asserting against uh, what got out of uh, the response. And all of these things, like assigns, assert template, all of these helpers, they were actually testing the view interface, like what got passed from my controller to my view. But now we are treating it as a black box. So everything is uh, as a black controller and view are together. We are not allowed to or recommended to go inside and test what is happening inside. And we are just uh, testing what is coming outside of that black box. So 
we are no longer testing the controller view interface that we were testing in Rails 4. So the controller view interface is just like an implementation detail. Rails has some way of passing data from controllers to views. We don't have to actually test how it is passing or what it is passing. Uh, we, just, uh, we just test uh, what comes out of it. And that's why uh, these helpers, assert, template, assign, they're all deprecated in Rails 5. So uh, if you are using these helpers, you will get a warning uh, in Rails 5. You cannot run uh, those tests directly. But another question, why, would, why we were doing it in the first place? Why we were testing uh, such things like uh, instance variables or which template got rendered? Why we were uh, testing the controller view interface? Because sometimes it's useful to test that controller view interface in isolation. Let's say uh, you're building a Rails engine, and you have a separate app which is consuming that engine. So in that case, you, your controller is coming from the engine, but views are present in your Rails app. So in that case, it's uh, important to actually see that your controller is specifying a particular contract, and it is providing certain instance variables to your views. So in that case, it can make sense to actually test the controller view interface. Uh, so if you are using device, in that case, the controllers are present in device, but your views are present in your Rails app. So we know that, okay, these instance variables are available from our device controllers, which we can use in our views. So in such cases, it's important to actually test uh, this interface in isolation too. That's why uh, Rails has not completely removed it, so it's present in a gem. Uh, Rails controller testing gem. And if you are upgrading to uh, Rails 5 from Rails 4, uh, and if you have such tests, uh, you can include this gem. And thanks to Goshang, he wrote this gem. So uh, you can include this gem, and you will get those helpers uh, in your Rails 5 app. So let's talk about uh, the HTTP request methods that we use for uh, testing our controller actions, like get, post, patch, uh, delete, and whatever. So we use these helpers uh, like post, and we pass the parameters. Like I want to create a, pro a, a product with name FIFA, so I'm passing the uh, parameters as a hash. And if you see, we are not specifying anywhere that that, that product name FIFA is to be uh, considered as params. So we are just specifying the hash directly. So we are using positional arguments. The first argument that we pass to the HTTP request method is uh, the uh, is the uh, params. Rails knows it internally. But it's not the only argument that we can pass. We can pass optional hash of session variables. We can pass optional hash of flash values. And if you notice, everything is optional. So all the three arguments are optional. So it, it's OK when you start with writing, like sending just params. But it gets tricky when you start writing, like you don't want params, but you want flash. You want flash, but you don't want session variables. So it gets really confusing like this. So here in this case, I don't want name. Uh, sorry, I don't want params, but I want uh, flash and session variables. I don't want params and session variables. I want only flash. So it gets very tricky and confusing what I'm really trying to do. So no idea what I'm trying to do. OK, it worked. <laughs> So in Rails 5, uh, we have a better solution now. We no longer have those uh, positional arguments. Because Rails 5 depends by default on Ruby 2.2.2 plus. So we can use keyword arguments for uh, such uh, uh, helper methods. And uh, Rails is taking advantage of keyword arguments. And now if we try to pass the params directly as params without specifying anything, uh, we will get a deprecation warning that you have to pass them through uh, keyword arguments. So we can now specify, uh, like, these are my params, these are my session variables, these are my flash messages using keyword arguments. So it's become a bit better. If your test is uh, using action controller test case, then we have access to params, flash, uh, session, and uh, AJAX request or not. And if you are using integration test, then we have access to uh, params, environment, headers, and et cetera. So if you are using, like, if you generate uh, new Rails uh, tests in Rails 5, uh, you cannot set session and other things, because uh, action dispatch integration test uh, don't allow those keyword arguments. This also has some implications. Nothing is free. So if you have something like this in Rails 4, where you are passing the uh, params as the first argument, and the key of the param is session. So this used to work in Rails, 5, uh, Rails 4. It used to treat uh, these uh, params uh, key with session. But in Rails 5, 
this session is interpreted as session, not params, because session is the keyword argument, which, uh, which has some meaning in Rails 5. So if, you're, uh, if you have something like this edge case, it may not work correctly in Rails 5. So that's one thing to note about uh, these uh, request methods. Let's talk about uh, testing API requests. So Rails 5, you can generate now API-only apps. Uh, in API only apps, we have JSON or XML requests. We don't have HTML requests. So we have to have some better way of uh, testing um, uh, those requests. So by default, uh, when we write a controller test or integration test, the request is uh, treated as a, a HTML request if we don't specify what we want to actually do. So in case of uh, Rails 4, if you have to specify it as a JSON thing, uh, we have to specify a lot of things. Like we have to specify the format. We have to specify the params as JSON. We have to also specify the content type as JSON. So too many times we have to specify what we want to do. Uh, instead of that, if there was some way that Rails can internally figure out that this is JSON request, so I have to pass the params as JSON. I have to set these proper headers. It will be good for us. So we don't have to specify a lot of things. And that's what Rails 5 does. So we just have to specify the request as add JSON. And internally, it will figure out that, OK, I, ha I have to set these headers. I have to, set my I have to send my params as uh, JSON params. So we don't have to specify everything manually. It will just work out of the box. And one more good thing about this is uh, if you are testing the response that comes out of your JSON endpoint, uh, you have to actually uh, like convert your body to JSON before testing it. But when you specify the encoder as JSON, uh, it will figure out of uh, converting the body to JSON format also. So uh, one more helper method can be removed from your uh, test cases. So yeah, it figures out the content type based on what you uh, want. And then it will use the pass body. Like we can use the pass body method to uh, test, uh, to write assertions. So this was all about uh, like fun controller functional integration test. But there are some other changes too. So. Uh, there is a now active job async adapter for uh, our tests. So by default, active, uh, active job had two adapters, inline and async. But only inline was default for uh, uh, writing active job tests. So if you are using Sidekick in production, then uh, when you are writing tests and writing tests for your active job uh, uh, classes, they were actually using the inline adapter. So even if you are using, uh, like if by default, uh, like by any chance, if you are dependent on any asynchronous behavior in production. In development, you are doing things in synchronous fashion. So now Rails 5 will have a uh, async adapter, which will be default for uh, test mode. So uh, it will be uh, as close to uh, your production environment as possible. So it's like a better default option to have, because we will not run into uh, random issues which happen only in production. So Rails can speed up uh, our test uh, more by running tests in parallel. Like it can use your CPUs, it can use different processes to run tests uh, faster. But for that, we ha also have to make sure that if you if we run our test in random order, they will not fail randomly. Sometimes that happens. Like your one test is dependent on your second test. The order matters. So Rails 5 will also have this configuration option where the test will run in random order by default. So even if the parallel thing, uh, like speeding up tests using parallel tests has not happened yet, it's sort of a good step towards that goal, that now we have our tests running in random order. So we can fix issues uh, which are dependent on uh, running tests in a particular order. And we, can, we may fix some of, the, uh, like some of the bugs also in our apps. So uh, testing in Rails 5 is better experience, a bit smarter experience with the introduction of test runner because now we can run tests more effectively than we used to do. Uh, there are a lot of things that have changed related to controller testing also. But I think the biggest uh, takeaway is that we are moving towards writing more end-to-end -end testing. And we are not writing uh, many, uh, like we are not writing the old style uh, functional tests. So we, we are uh, more focusing on uh, writing end-to-end -end tests. Uh, there is much more in Rails 5 than this. We, we just covered uh, the changes related to testing today. But if you want to know uh, more about Rails 5, uh, we have a blog series on Rails 5. So we have around uh, more than 50 blog posts on various features in Rails 5. So I would highly recommend uh, checking that. 
Uh, there is also a newsletter this week in Rails started by Godfrey, who is uh, the Rails core team member. So if you subscribe to this newsletter, you will get a like weekly scoop of things of what happened in Rails in that particular week. So I will highly, highly recommend this too if you are interested in knowing what is happening in Rails uh, in each week. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, is this one? Okay. Thank you, Pratimesh, for your really, really cool talk on tests. Um, any questions for him? We can accept one question before lunch. Okay, I guess all of you are hungry. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, take note of his Twitter handle if you um, want to contact him. He's also here in Singapore for um, quite a few more days, so uh, say hi. Thank you very much. Thank you.